that's not particularly good for it. Those little sleeves I put on, they, they may not be of much help. I think I've got to put bigger uh, sleeves on it. Shrink sleeves right over top of the connections here. had those kinds of problems. But I won't worry so much about the uh, negative one. Although I haven't really studied it carefully, I'm pretty sure pretty sure or what? Pretty sure there's a connection to the chassis in here somewhere. Somewhere. Anyway. reason that's important is because uh, if the negative of the capacitor here makes an accidental contact to the chassis, there may or may not be consequences. Depending upon how they've designed this particular radio. doing radio work is you really I mean every radio is so different I mean, they're all identical and completely different at the same time and so you really have to do a little bit of repair planning and, and I'm sure if you watch my videos you know even when you plan things often in the execution you find out that your plan stinks you gotta be dynamic about things too. You have to be willing to let go of ideas that are in your head, and that's what I have a lot of trouble with. I have a book here. I have an interesting book here. Uh, my father got it when he was in university. He took a course at the University of Buffalo, believe it or not, in, of all things, Applied Imagination. Uh, there was a professor there at the University of Buffalo who got this idea that uh, schools were missing an opportunity to teach a very important thing, which is how to use your imagination. And I don't know how my father ended up in this course. My father was not a very imagin uh, imaginary guy. He didn't use his imagination much, that's for sure. Nevertheless, I have this book. When I was about 20 years old, I read it. I, I found it on the, my parents' bookshelf. And I read it, Applied Imagination. I can't think of the guy's name right now, the author. So this book is really an attempt to get universities interested in starting up courses in Applied Imagination. And the interesting thing about this book is that he details a brand new concept called brainstorming that he's invented. I think everybody's heard of brainstorming. I think that's a common a common thing. We, I think everybody has an idea of what brainstorming is. But he's the one who actually defined it and created the whole concept. 
in this book, which I read. And I got a fair bit out of it. And that's one of the basic things is we tend to stifle our imaginations without realizing it. Uh, one way is we run with the first idea that comes into our heads. And there's 50 more ideas behind it, but we won't let them out because we're too busy going with the first one. And, uh, and the whole uh, brainstorming thing is, is actually a very rigid process that a group of people go through, can go through. And I've seen it done uh, in my professional life when I was working in a sort of supervisory managerial type role and uh, done all wrong because who's read this book? I don't know who's read this book. His name was, um, I want to say Irwin or Oscar, it's something like that. The cool thing is, the book I've got is signed by the author. So I've got a signed copy of the book where the concept of brainstorming was first put out. Cool, eh? I'm making an utter mess of this. It's a pretty sad looking situation here. I'm going to get this straightened out better. I if I pull it up through now. This is terrible. Well, that's great. There's a dead short there now. I didn't think much about the leads hitting each other, touching each other. Come on. Hoping someday my signed copy of this obscure book, which never got anywhere, although the idea in it certainly got out, uh, maybe someday it'll, it'll be worth a million dollars. Because I'm not having any luck finding gold in these radios. I keep opening them up and hoping the gold is in there. almost around the bend here. How come it won't slide anymore? I'm using little pliers I'm not used to using. Only orange handle guys. You, know, you get kind of used to your tools. The feel of them and that. It's almost there. Just getting hung up here. There it goes. Huh. Come on, a little further. Okay, now let's just get this one up a little higher yet. I'm trying to do this in a way that you can see what I'm doing with my fingers in that, but it gets a little difficult. Come on, up there just a bit more. There. Okay, I gotta shrink those right there. get rid of this capacitor here. I won't pull them right out of the circuit because I'll lose track of what I've done. I'll just leave them hanging over here. What the heck? So that's where that went. Little 
adhesive cover. Anyway, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but that's okay. Can shrink those with a soldering iron. They really only have to shrink enough to get a grip on something so they don't slide. maneuver is pull the capacitor up through I'm a little worried about this negative wire here the way it's done push it might be better okay everybody through Osborne, that's his name. The author's name was Osborne. Osborne in the University. Osborne in the University of Buffalo. I don't like that. You can say, well, what are my folks, what are my dad doing going to the University of Buffalo? Well, he we was living in Canada. We, we live in Canada, of course, right near the American border. Hey, most Canadians live close to the American border. Um, and, uh, he was living uh, literally 15 minutes from Buffalo, if even that. Buffalo being the big city in the neighborhood back then. Uh, traveling here to Toronto would have been a much, much bigger trip. So uh, that's why my Canadian father was going to take courses at the University of Buffalo. Pretty good. I'd say let's test it, but I've already cut one of the other capacitors out, so I'm going to have to carry on with that. Let me put this back this way, the way it was, so I'm less confused. 0.047 microfarads. Nice and clear on this one. Point oh four seven. That's a point oh five in my book. It's actually 0.047 also. Just gotta go there, no problem. And uh, the reason I'm using these orange handled tools, as much of a hassle as they are for me, is I've lost track of my other one.
snug it up fairly close on this side here. side of this capacitor is at ground potential so having a bit of wire hanging out in the radio won't matter. A bit of bare wire. Assuming the chassis is... I still haven't determined how the chassis is connected here. different but so because my soldering iron is not so good at delivering the heat I'm running it at a much higher temperature contact the siding iron makes with the work it can still deliver heat into it. Yeah, so probably the radio designer, if he could look at what I'm doing, he'd say, Wow, that's all that capacitor is tiny. Wow, I could have made this even smaller. He was looking at this, but still back in the... I wonder what year this was from. Probably mid-60s. That's what I would guess. in the day when he was making this he was saying to himself wow look at the small size of all these parts <laughs> you know people have been living in the modern times the whole time say, well, what well, doesn't matter that you're using a different pair of pliers. Like these ones have a little spring in them, in the handle. So just before they close, you start working against the spring. See, I'm not used to that, so I can't tell if I'm feeling the spring or the work. And often I'm gripping something, I'm actually not gripping it, I'm just squeezing on the spring. So I think whatever it is you get used to using, you get used to using a stupid statement, wasn't it? Captain Obvious. Yeah, I guess we're all that sometimes. Good on that one. You might as well just keep going. Let's do away with this one. Funny on the color thing, 0.047. Maybe it's just in a hotter spot in the radio. Doesn't look like it to me though. So this guy goes from. 